Greenpeace newsletter. Oh, and condoms. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> New man is off to the office. Mark, if you wish. Yeah, I was. And I don't need your permission, thank you. It's in lieu of rent. <laughs> so, what does a new man do at lunchtime? I mean, after the Tai Chi lesson and the tofu salad. You got time for a quick pint? A real organic ale, obviously. All the hops humanely killed. <laughs> Sorry, thought I'd pop down to Camden Lock. Sonia's going to do the cards. Your lousy at cards. Tarot cards. <laughs> yeah, I bet you still lose. <laughs> Sonia, eh? So what, still a really is history, then? I think Sonia could be my sort of woman. She's very together and very, very well adjusted. Is this the one with the four therapists? <laughs> but at least she's been adjusted by professionals. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'll be out of your space this weekend. I have enrolled in a manhood workshop. <laughs> it's crucial stuff, Gary. I'll be learning how to access my inner chemical reservoir and eventually be able to control my own testosterone levels by the sheer power of thought. Awesome stuff, eh, Gary? Yes, the consequences are frightening, Ron. No, the consequences are a new world order built on genuine love and total sensitivity towards each other. This weekend, we are taking to the forest to absorb the he elements from nature, so strengthening our male bonding. <laughs> so basically, it's into the woods, and I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Radical. Hey, it's good that somebody's got work to go to. Hey, Ron? Well, that's right, isn't it, Yvonne? You see, what we have here is a part-time knocker and collector of negative vibes. Really? Tell me about it. Neanderthal, Yvonne. An Iron Age reject. Well, I'll be seeing you. I'll bring the organic wine later. And don't worry, Yvonne. Some of us are still evolving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> evolving. He means revolving. Going around in circles looking for himself. Well, at least he's making the effort. Meaning? Just that. A woman has rejected him. I know he's trying to be better for the next woman to come along. I have to applaud that, Gary. Ronnie's trying to raise his thresholds. No, he's not. Ronnie's trying to raise his chances of getting his leg over. <laughs> All this new age stuff is just a ploy to see if he can get into somebody's new age knickers. It's a flag. He still thinks the Rainbow Warrior is one of the gladiators. Part time not for a collector of negative vibes. He's right, isn't he? Well, personally, I think Ron is turning into a very aware and sincere human being. Well, personally, I think Ron should go. The sooner the better. Phone Stella, see if she'll have him back. Tell her there's a few quid in it for her, she'll take him back by the weekend. Go on, speak to her. No, I won't. Well, she's supposed to be your best friend. Well, I can see it from Ron's side as well now. And besides, I'm not sure I know Stella anymore. I haven't spoken to her since this sudden sexual liberation, since she started carving notches on her bed head. Yeah, but she might have calmed down a bit. Oh, she might. I should might have whittled the whole bed away by now and be rolling around in sawdust and shavings. <laughs> see you later. Happy birthday to you. Oh, careful, Lil. Don't blow the ice and all the norway to whip rams, all that sugar. <laughs> Lil's birthday. Oh, don't tell me you forgot the chocolate. Haven't you got anything for her? What is this? But this was for you. Well, what is it? Harry, the chocolate! Oh, so good. You better not give this to Lil. My husband could have a heart attack. No, I'm risking one myself a bit later on. Yeah, well, I've got to sing her a song instead. Lil, um, Gary's going to sing you a song for your birthday. Thanks for the pressure. But don't be mean. You know hundreds of songs. How old are we, Lil? She's 63, aren't you, Lil? 63. Yeah, that's close enough. When I get older, losing my head Many years from now Will you still be sending me a valentine? Birthday greetings, bottle of wine If I stay out till quarter to three Would you lock the door? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Gary Sparrow, unmistakable as always. Sydney Wicks. And before you ask, no, I will not play fourth down the bill to some drunken fire eater at a flea pit in Deptford. Now, when I ask a thing like that, yeah, yes, you, you would. would. Harry wants to come, so 
concentrate on his songwriting side of things. And so he should, so he should. I mean, that was an A1 little number, yes. I mean, with a few more verses, that could be perfect for my latest discovery. <sighs> George Fonda, you didn't discover him. You're just a ghastly freak of nature. Here, here, you are talking about a star of stage, screen, and radio. A living legend. A musical millionaire. He could be worth a lot of money to me. Mm. And he's one of Reggie's favourites. Oh, and one of Reggie's favourites. Oh, Mr. Wu, what can I do? Yeah, please, Reg. I've queued up all night once on Shaftesbury Avenue for tickets for George. Yeah, well, he inspires that kind of dedication. I hope you've got the tickets. I did, yes. Unfortunately, I was in a wrong queue. Ivan Avella's good, but he's not as funny. <laughs> right, listen, no more disparagement. The man is a genius. He has raised the status of the ukulele to the level of the symphony orchestra. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, I would. That kind of talk sells tickets. Well, how come he's appearing courtesy of you? Because I'm paying him money. Well, that's a first. I am paying him what nobody else in London would pay him. You wouldn't believe what I'm paying him. I don't believe what I'm paying him. But I should be known as the man who brought George Foreman to London during the war, regardless of the cost. Everyone will know Sidney Wicks. <laughs> in a week from now, I could be the most notorious bankrupt in town. <laughs> um, didn't you mention something about one of Gary's songs? Uh, no, I don't think you did. I think you did, actually, Gary. Yeah, I, I'm sure I did. What was that called? When I'm 64? Yeah, do you know, that might have been written specially for George Foreman. Well, I can assure you it wasn't. Yeah, but you can even sing it, can't you? Yeah, well, of course, he might want to change a word or two here or there, put it in a verse of his own, maybe. No, no, he can't. But he's a star, Gary. A star. Oh, I'd love George to hear that number. I really would. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll bring you round to meet you. Well, here? Yeah. Oh, George Formby in my pub. Oh, I... Tell Mr Formby there will be police presence at all times. <laughs> Excellent. How about tomorrow, then? No, yeah, sorry, Wexley. Some of us have got better things to do. Oh, um, just a minute. Can we get out of here? Now. Um, better things to do. Gary, George Formby is coming here to meet you in person. What could you possibly be doing that's better? Oh, uh, washing my hair, ironing a shirt, knitting a parachute. No, you listen to me, Gary Sparrow. Your songs could get us out of here on the road to a new life. Now, we talked about this ages ago, Gary. You can't have forgotten so easily. No, no, of course not. Well, then... Having a song taken up by someone like George Formby could be the making of you. Yeah, but not that song. Well, why not? Have you got anything better for him? I suppose we could try him out on Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Well, then, I mean, this is our big chance, Gary, so you just find the time to meet him. We'd like to meet George Formby. In fact, it's been an ambition of his for a very long time. <laughs> Cancelled my manhood workshop. <laughs> Thought I'd let my testosterone find its own level. And always dilute it with lager if I have to. Tarry didn't go too good either. All doom and gloom. Apparently a period of celibacy looms. Well, the card said that. No, Sonia said that. <laughs> Saturday the 14th of February, 1942. You going? <laughs> Judging by the worried and depressed look on your face, I'd say you must have tickets. Me, you're going to see George Formby. It's worse than that one. He's going to see me. Well, you started performing again. Where is it this time? The Palladium? No, I just happen to play when I'm 64. You know, totally innocent. Except, as usual, you claimed you wrote it, which, let's face it, isn't totally innocent. In fact, let's really face it, it's deception, copyright theft and fraud, but do go on. Well, that's it. I play the song, then up pops Sidney Wicks, and the next thing I know, it's audition time at the Royal Oak. But what if George Formby likes the song? I can't let that happen, Ron. That's messing with history. Well, yeah, but not a lot. I mean, it just means that Paul McCartney won't bother writing it because he grew up hearing George Formby singing it. It'll still exist. British culture will remain intact. No, I've got to get out of this one, Ron. Well, don't go back. Stand him up. I don't do that. Phoebe would never forgive me. Well, that's it, then. George Formby sings the Beatles. <laughs> A collector's item if ever I heard one. <laughs> do you think you could get him to sing Strawberry Fields Forever? I think I'd like that. Yeah, I know this is all a big joke to you, but you can't go messing around with history. It's a knock-on effect and very serious consequences. I say, how much? Uh, well, I'm not sure. You don't see many of those about. <laughs> well, you wouldn't, you know. <laughs> George Formby never played the Hackney Empire. <laughs> but you have to go now. Well, yeah, he's a weekend market sort of person. You know, if I don't catch him now, it's a trip up to Nottingham midweek. Oh, yeah, go on then, twist on. <laughs> May I say something? No. Uh, in order to remove the cloudiness, that wine has been filtered through the dried innards of a deceased fish. 
really? Point out that's being filtered through me. Personally, I'd be more worried about it after that. <laughs> I don't expect you to care, but I know Yvonne appreciates my little help tips. She is, after all, Yvonne, isn't she? Ciao. <laughs> I told you, he's definitely getting a thing for you. No. Yes. No. Yes. Mind you, he's getting a bit much, isn't he? Can't even enjoy a drink without having to swallow all the sordid details. And if I'm told that one more thing is a desecration of the Brazilian rainforest... All right, I know. Look, it is time to phone Stella. Yes. No later when you've gone. Oh, right, I've gone, I've gone. <laughs> Stella, it's Yvonne. Look, I don't suppose you want to talk about things, but... Stella? Stella, hey, it's okay. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk. Oh, oh it's getting deeper out there. I hope your visitors are going to make it. No, don't worry. We'll see a battle for a blizzard if there's a few bob involved. Oh, George, for me coming here. I was so nervous I could do with a drink. I could do with a transfer to the Russian front. Oh, come on, Gary. You can't hate him that much. You never met him. I've never met Hitler, but I don't send him a birthday card. That is not the same thing at all, Gary, and you know it. George is very, very popular. He's filled the empire tomorrow. What with sandbags? Gary, you just behave yourself when they come. Be nice. I mean, this could be the day when your career takes a step forward. Hm. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Brilliant. That's a song, isn't it? I'm coming to recognise a Gary Sparrow song in the making. Yes, that's right, Reg. It's called Walking on the Moon. <laughs> Thanks, Gentlemen. May I present the great George Formby? Good morning. <laughs> Looks more assertive in a frock, doesn't he? What do you call it afternoon around here? <laughs> How do you do? Turned out nice again. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. George, come sit down here, dear. Away from the bar. And the uh, very lovely Mrs. Beryl Formby, obviously. Obviously. No show without punch, eh, Red? The, uh, the piano's over here. Well, that's no good. You can't play one. Oh, but Gary can play. So play on, Gary. Let's hear this song. I want to see the words written down first. Don't we? That's right. I don't want George doing anything that might offend. Really? Mr. Wu's solicitor's not been in touch yet, then? <laughs> Beg pardon? Words, please. That's how we work. Yeah, well, Gary prefers to play it. That's how we work. Play it. How do you feel about that, George? Play it loud, for God's sake. Drown her out. Yeah. We don't do encores in private. Come on, that's what I say. That's perfect for George. Just perfect. <laughs> uh, that would be the top number in all the promenade booths from Yarmouth to Blackpool. Well, it's just the sort of thing he needs. Something for the old ones, so to speak. Well, Gary can write songs for people of all ages. He's very professional. Uh, listen, George, I, uh, I might want to change a few things. Might you? Well, I might. Well, Gary, actually, I definitely will. Don't get me wrong, it's a lovely song. A bit old-fashioned, but we can soon sort that out. But, but that bit that goes, birthday greetings, bottle of wine. Who drinks wine, lad? No, 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 no. That should be bottle of stout. <laughs> you see, that's my audience, Gary. Man of the people, me. Yeah, but George Stout won't really rhyme with Valentine, will it? No, no, but uh, it does need to be a bit cheekier somehow. Something about um, out for out. I see. And out for now is cheaper. <laughs> well, it will be when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a sheer sophistication that's there, isn't it? <laughs> Look, George, let me think about it. I'll work on it, represent it at a later date, OK? I mean, it's not even written down. Yeah, there's no going back now, Gary, lad. It's all up here now. Never forget a lyric, mate. <laughs> well, not unless I've had a few. Can I just work off, just for starters? I can't. Uh... <laughs> do you two much in about? Uh, nothing, pet. I'll just music talk. <laughs> Oh, Bentley's parked out there. How lovely new Bentley. We haven't had it in five minutes. Uh, George. Oh, George! <laughs> Free! <laughs> Come on, Gary. Free! <laughs> Free! There you go, there's a... Living legend. You okay? How are you feeling? Oh, sorry.
so-so. Oh, really? So-so used to be a code for passing the razor blades. Excuse me. Another one of these. Oh, look at Bob. I'm really sorry about that outburst on the phone. It's just that you were the only one to ring. Do you know I haven't heard from Chrissy in over a fortnight? What's with Lindsay? Is she away or what? Well, nobody quite knew what to say. I mean, you're just surprised us, that's all. Well, you know, dragging in every passing bloke and banging them up against the wall. I mean, sort of, um... Is it tiring? I mean, do you have to take extra vitamins or what? Just suppose forget who you in. It was Chrissy who wondered, not me. Oh, come on, I understand and I respect your privacy. You know that. Don't you get stiff? <laughs> so you like to start with first to your back. It was Lindsay who wondered. Yvonne? Oh, come on. You don't care what you do in your own home or in the park. As long as it's after closing time and you don't break the swings. <laughs> oh, look, as long as you're happy. You're not happy, are you? Come on, Stella, if it makes you this miserable, don't do it. I don't. Hey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're chasing somewhere more salubrious. I wouldn't know the meaning of the word, Gary. I told you. Man of the people, me. Who's that up there? It's the people. <laughs> Turn down nice again. <laughs> Doesn't take much, does it? Nearly everyone. <laughs> Gee, you told Chrissy about him as well. Going through the car wash, remember? You said you'd never had a hot wax like it. Did I? <laughs> well, I lost track. I'm a lousy liar. I invented the first bloke just to cheer myself up. Then it got a bit out of hand and I couldn't remember what I'd said to who. But did you come to actually believe it? No, you did. Right. And gradually the phone stopped ringing and I was all on my own. I realised I'd overdone it over-egged the pudding. Oh, talking of the pudding, it's still in our spare room. Oh, yeah, I heard. <laughs> I hope he hasn't eaten absolutely everything. Not absolutely everything, no. We've still got some of those square things left. Cream crackers? No placemats. <laughs> but did you have to throw Ron out just to have a fantasy? Well, I didn't know it was going to be just a fantasy, did I? Remember my boss, the bloke at your fancy dress do? The one that Ron beat up because he thought you were having an affair with? I was. Well, nearly. But not with him, with his brother. He used to be our area manager. We were about to. Or so I thought. He kept offering me weekends away, Brighton, Bournemouth, Paris even. Well, I couldn't very well have hidden that from Ron. I'm rotten at all that deception stuff. So I thought it was more honest just to check him out. What, leave the decks clear ready for action? Mm. So what happened? Nothing. He got transferred to head office. And a week later, he was spotted in Bournemouth with a personnel officer. God, men are bastards. Bastards. <laughs> hey, you, another one of these now. <laughs> bastards. You see, Gary, women are like that. Possessive. Mm. Can't live with them. Can't live with them. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. I'll buy that one too. You come up with the words and I'll sing them. Can't live with them. Can't. <laughs> oh, this is grand, Gary. You know, I've had this much fun since, um. Since the last time you did it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know why? Um, possessive. Women are like that, Gary. Can't live with him, can't live with him. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I had that one too. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Quick, write them all down, I'll do them all. <laughs> you start to forget things, are we, Josh? Eh? Nothing. Come on, drink up. Then it's either the black swan or the lemon flag. Flag and lag. <laughs> flag and lag. Flag and lag. I think we better make it the black swan, I can say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, cliché classics, Yvonne. You find a bloke and you think, he could be great, with a bit of help and encouragement, a bit of a trim here and there. Yeah, but with most men, it's six inches off the gut and half a yard off the ego. And the minute you show an interest, he thinks he must be great already. And it's downhill all the way. But Ron wasn't that bad, was he? Mm, no. I mean, like most blokes, he talks a good relationship. What he really means is, if I lay you, will you be me mum? <laughs> be realistic. I mean, Gary's okay. He's a workaholic. He's never at home because he's always in his shop. Frankly, I think he lives in the past. <laughs> hey, George. What about a son, eh? I'm leaning on the lamppost out the corner. No, 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 George. See, no lamppost. No lamppost there, right? Oh, no. What about that song, When I'm 64? Eh? You're right. Oh, Mr. Wolf. 
Thanks, <laughs> Mary. We better get you back to base. Yeah, let's have some more. Come on, man. To the white alive. <laughs> no, no, to the flag alive. <laughs> see, I can see it now. Come on. Uh, no, no, George. No, you don't want to go to the flag alive. You wouldn't like it down there. In your state, I don't think I'd be too keen on you. Really? Everybody loves George. That's Bill. That's my agent. Come on. Mr. Ricks. All right, all right, Mr. Formby. Simmer down. Look at him. Beryl will kill him. I should worry about him. She'll kill all of us. <laughs> no, very well. Tell her I am wearing nothing that has caused animal cruelty or diminished the world's resources. Or has ever been anywhere near an iron or a washing machine, I know I can see that. You look totally recycled. Well, he knows where all the appliances are kept. <laughs> Stella, without you, an appliance is just white goods, a thing of no meaning. Oh, he's right, you know. I do give meaning to his life. Oh, look at him. He obviously needs me. Oh, I do need you. Nearly as much as I need a chicken vindaloo and a can of lager. Oh, that's my boy. Come on. It's all you can eat for a fiver down the Star of Bengal. I blame your fella for this. Don't you have any control over him? They did slip out together, remember? This is turning out to be a right Fred Carno. This is Carno bashed up. Him gone AWOL. And here am I, stuck in one of the worst parts of London. Do you mind? There's a lot worse than this. We've never been treated like this in the North. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. People look up to us. People look after us. Hospitality. Little sandwiches and butterfly buns. Well, there's a war on down here. What didn't they tell you about it? <laughs> look at that. Just look at the state of that. Wait, for the flag of land. Oh, Gary, how could you... You can't live with them, and you can't live without them. <laughs> I've heard enough. Mr. Wicks, fetch us a cab. Get us out of here, please. Now, 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 let's not be hasty, dear lady. Yeah, I mean, that's right. What about the songs? Songs? From him? The sooner my George is away from him, the better. In fact, don't even stand near him. Well, stay here, Gary. <laughs> He's my pal. You're always getting rid of my pal. Can we try and keep some sort of order? Any order would do. Gary, have you got nothing at all to say? Uh... Only that I am deeply sorry for any upset that I may have caused. And if Mrs. Formby wanted to leave right now, no one would blame her. I see. He's apologised. That's right. Now, let's not make a mountain out of a mole, you? <laughs> and let's not pass up the chances of new material. Good song. Can't be easy to find. Yeah, and Gary writes some of the best songs going. I mean, Gary Sparrow is a name for tomorrow. Isn't that right, Mr. Wicks? That's right. <laughs> and they don't ever have to meet. We can see to that. Yeah, but if Mrs. Formby wanted to stick to her guns and leave right now, I'm sure we'd all understand. Gary! Business is business. We must be sensible. Well, that's right. I mean, life goes on. The world has to keep on turning. Hey, no, don't let it. <laughs> well, we see. The song isn't even published. No problem. I'll do it on Monday. In fact, it isn't even written down. <laughs> Go on, then, Gary. This could be your first big break. You might be singing this song in years to come. For once, you could be right, Reg. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't suppose you have a bottle of champagne, Andy? Good. And you won't be disappointed. Oh, sorry, some of us have done enough celebrating. <laughs> Are we, Gary? Is that right, pal? Hey, I say. It's just that, well, in the short time I've known him, I've come to realise that he is a very special, warm, wonderful human being. What's all this muttering over there? Uh, business, George. That's business. Well, you see, I worry about the bad publicity. If it should ever come out about all my convictions. Convictions? Well, things I am really, really ashamed of now. But would the people see it that way? Hey, I'm not allowed to muttering corners with the dancers. Why are you muttering? Steady on, him? George. Steady. How dare you mutter with my wife? <laughs> Steady on, there, steady on. Drunk and disorderly, this is. Assault, even, or, or oh. grievous, what's name? Gary, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. He just flew past me and went into the fireplace. Oh. Daft bat. That 
watch your strumming hand. Oh. Could be out for weeks. No, not possible. <laughs> the Aggie Empire, the Borough. Uh, oh, but everything is broken for men. Surely I believe mean, bleeding broken hearts for men, for God's sake. Yeah, now would you know? I beg you for this. Oh, that's right, you turn in him as well. You're as bad as these two. I mean, if that is what fame does for people, I'd rather not know. Rich, throw them out. You can't do that to us. Oh, yes, I can, actually, Beryl, because in here I'm the boss. Rage chop chop. They are on their way, Phoebe. Nothing personal, Mr. Formby. I'm a big fan myself. I suppose an autograph would be out of question. You need his head sing to him. You need his head sing to him. He may have a broken hand, but I have a handful of broken dreams. <laughs> so that's why George Formby never played the Hackney Empire. <laughs> Turned out nice again. Yeah.